The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. This is the homily for the solemnity of the Holy Trinity. The theme that I've chosen for this Sunday is One God. Unknown Trinity in the Old Testament. The word Trinity does not appear in the sacred scripture. It is a word the church uses to define the mystery of the triune nature of the one mighty creator God. The revelation of the mystery of the one God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, was unknown to the covenant people of the Old Testament. It was an ineffable mystery hidden in the Holy Spirit-inspired writings of the Old Testament that Jesus Christ, the second person of the Most Holy Trinity, first revealed to us. Jesus reveals the mystery of Trinity. Jesus began to reveal the mystery of the triune nature of God to the apostles in his last supper discourse, John chapters 14 to 17. Then the revelation became clear to them after his resurrection and before his ascension when Jesus instructed his disciples to baptize believers using the Trinitarian formula. Matthew chapter 28 verse 18 to 19 we read, Jesus came up and spoke to them. He said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teach them to observe all the commands I gave you. Jesus' statement in this passage refers to the oneness of God as well as the unique relationship of the triune nature of the Most Holy Trinity. Jesus' command is to baptize in the name, singular, of the three persons of the unity, that is the most holy trinity. First time the word trinity appears in the writings of Theophilus of Antioch, the famous writing is called Ad Autolicum, in 181 AD. It is in fact the oldest extant work that uses the actual word trinity to refer to God his word, the Son, and his wisdom, the Holy Spirit. The context is a discussion of the first three days of creation in Genesis chapter 1, verses from 1 to 3. It is the attribute of God, of the Most High and Almighty, and of the living God, not only to be everywhere, but also to see and hear all. For he can in no way be contained in a place. The three days before the luminaries were created or types of the Trinity, God, his word, and his wisdom. Holy Trinity and Sign of the Cross Belief in Holy Trinity is the same profession of belief that Christians confess whenever making the sign of the cross and using the theological Trinitarian formula in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The sign of the cross made across our bodies is everything a Christian believes in one profound gesture. It especially takes on that confession of belief when, according to the ancient custom, holding up the first two fingers of the right hand together to symbolize the humanity and divinity of the Christ and holding the last three fingers against the palm to symbolize the unique three-in-one relationship of the Most Holy Trinity. Then the motion from forehead to chest and the hand moving from one shoulder to the other symbolizes our belief that God the Son came from heaven to earth, incarnation, and from suffering to resurrection to accomplish humanity's salvation. Western right Catholic make the sign of the cross from left shoulder to the right, while Eastern right Catholics cross from the right shoulder to the left. So, in short, whenever you put the sign of the cross, you express your belief in the Holy Trinity. You also acknowledge that Jesus Christ is fully human, fully divine. And you also acknowledge that incarnation really took place. And you also acknowledge that Jesus suffered for you. That is what you do whenever you put the sign of the cross. The early church fathers attested to the use of the sign of the cross. For example, Tertullian, he wrote it around 258 these words. In all our travels and movements, in all our coming in and going out, in putting on our shoes, at the bath, at the table, in lighting our candles, in lying down, in sitting down, whatever employment occupies us, we mark our foreheads with the sign of the cross. 
The famous Bishop, Bishop Fulton Chin, in his book, Your Life is Worth Living, chapter 16, he talks about the mystery of the Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. He says the Father in the Old Testament, almost like he's hiding behind the Son. In other words, the Son reveals the Father. In Old Testament, whenever you come across Father, he purposefully avoids being seen. It appears as if he's, he's waiting. It's only the Son reveals the Father. For example, uh, John chapter 14 verse 9, uh, Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. So here you clearly see that the Father is hiding behind the Son or the Son is the one who reveals the Father. Number two, just as the Son revealed the Father, our Lord said he would send the Holy Spirit to reveal the Son. John chapter 16 verse 13 to 14 we read, But when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. In these words, Jesus reveals that once he ascends to the Father, then all of the spiritual blessings won by him on Calvary would be conveyed to us by the Holy Spirit. We would not receive all the merits of his life until the Spirit came to this earth. And the great role of the Holy Spirit is to stand behind the scenes to make Christ more real. Hence, the apostles did not understand the crucifixion until after Pentecost. St. Paul goes so far as to say, no one can call Jesus Lord except by the Spirit. Yes, you can pronounce the word Jesus, but you do not know Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, the Lord of the universe, except by the Holy Spirit. So, Holy Spirit reveals the Son. Jesus was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. So, the Father hides behind the Son. The Son reveals the Father, and Holy Spirit reveals the Son. Finally, the church reveals the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is now clearly seen and revealed as the one active in our lives and in the church sanctifying or making holy all who follow Jesus and all who seek the will of the Father. So, my brothers and sisters, this mystery is very, very essential for you to understand. The Son reveals the Father. Holy Spirit reveals the Son. And the church, the body of Christ, reveals the Holy Spirit. Peter Kreft wrote these beautiful words in his book, The Philosophy of Jesus. If God is not a trinity, God is not love. For love requires three things, a lover, a beloved, and a relationship between them. If God were only one person, he could be a lover, but not love itself. The Father loves the Son, and the Son loves the Father, and the Spirit is the love proceeding from both from all eternity. There is an old story about a henpecked husband who went to a psychologist. He was tired of being dominated by his wife. The psychologist told him, you do not have to accept your wife's bullying. You need to go home right now and let her know that you are your own boss. The husband decided to take the doctor's advice. He went home and slammed the door on the way in. He confronted his wife and said, from now on, you will do what I say. Get my supper then. Go upstairs and lay out my clothes. After I eat, I'm going out with boys while you stay home. By the way, do you know who is going to tie my tie for me? I sure do, said his wife calmly. The undertaker. Some marriages are filled with conflict. So are some offices. Unfortunately, some churches are filled with conflict as well. The Feast of the Holy Trinity challenges us to cultivate the Trinitarian relationship of love and unity in our families and offices and parishes. Amen.